guys, it's Trina, and this is my spoiler-free full series review of the Across the Universe trilogy by Beth Revis. Book one is Across the Universe, book two is A Million Suns, and the last book is Shades of Earth. This is a young adult science fiction series, and it is about... In our future, scientists have discovered this planet that is a lot like Earth and it's been deemed habitable for humans, so a group of scientists and military and researchers sign up to travel to this planet, but the thing is, it's going to take 350 years to get there. So these people are cryogenically frozen so that they'll just basically be asleep for the entire trip there, and then once we arrive at the new planet, they will be unfrozen and start to colonize it and make it habitable for future humans to make a new home on this new planet. Our main character, Amy, is the daughter of a scientist and a military leader who are going to this new planet, so she's just traveling with them, even though she's not part of the project. And she's frozen, and she wakes up 50 years too soon. Like, they have not gotten to the planet yet. Her parents and everybody else are still frozen. And she's on this strange ship that has a strange colony on it. There's other people that have been born on the ship, and generation after generation, she's keeping the ship running, growing food, and helping to create supplies that will be useful for once we land on the planet. And our other main character, his name is Elder, and he is one of the people from the civilization that is been on this ship. So Amy is from Earth 300 years ago, and Elder is a person who's only ever known this ship. While she's trying to integrate herself into this society that she just does not understand on the ship, she's also trying to figure out why she was awoken 50 years too soon, and she's also learning more information behind this new planet. This is the first series that I've read by Beth Revis, and I, I think it's the first thing that she wrote, but I feel like this premise was something that was very interesting to me for a really long time, and I've heard a lot of mixed reviews about this series. It seems like a lot of people who read it when it came out really loved it, but more and more I've heard people saying they really didn't like this series, and so that's why I put it off. The reason I picked it up now, and the reason that I finished this series, because I did complain a little bit about some of the books in this series, uh, and you saw my ratings at the beginning there, I didn't exactly love it. The reason I continued to finish this series is because I've met Beth Revis twice, and I had never read anything by her, and I'm going to meet her again in a month, and I was like, I've got to read something by her before I meet her again, so i got to do it. That's why. I finished this series. I know a lot of people are like, if you didn't like the first book, why'd you even continue? Well, that's why I was interested in this author's works. So I'm going to take this review book by book. Now, what I did not know going into this book is that this is not like a sci-fi space adventure. This is a dystopian. It just happens to be set on a spaceship. And not knowing, not expecting this to be a dystopian, I started reading it and I was like, this ship society is horribly offensive. I really dislike it. I've written a full review on Goodreads if you want to know like more of my thoughts on this because I'm not exactly sure what people are going to consider spoilers, but I did not like the way that race was handled. I also didn't love how mental illness was used, but I do understand that this world and the setup of it was doing something intentional, that you're not supposed to like things. The book does use those things to set up a society that is intentionally flawed. And the whole idea here was that differences are seen as bad in that society. So it took me a while to overcome my discomfort. But as the book went on, I do see how this was set up as a world and a society that you're not supposed to like. However, that doesn't mean that everything was okay because of how the society was set up. There was an instance where, like, Amy knocks over a case of pencils on the doctor's desk and he reaches to straighten them and she's like, oh, he's totally OCD. And associating somebody who is organized with having obsessive compulsive disorder, that's not really what OCD is. As for my enjoyment of book one, I didn't really enjoy it. It was a pretty negative experience for me because it was that rough patch of just getting into it and understanding why it was doing the things that it was. And I did feel like the plot was very predictable. Like there are some big reveals at the end and I was like, I totally saw that coming. Why is this a surprise? I felt like the writing was very underdeveloped and both of these two characters are the only two points of views that we get. They felt very childish to me. Honestly, when I started this book, I thought Amy was six years old. Like, I thought we were in a flashback, and then she never aged up. Like, no, she was like 16 or 17 the entire time. So there was something about her character that made me think she was childish. And then there's something about Elder and the way that he speaks. The way that he spoke was in very short sentences, and it was kind of like with childlike wonder, like learning these new things. And 
I don't know what it was guys, but I felt like both of the characters felt kind of immature and childish in the first book. Moving into my thoughts about the second book, I did feel like the character development was much stronger in book two. I didn't have any problems getting into book two now that I knew that this was a dystopian world and what the setup of this society was and that I was supposed to just not like it. I didn't really find any issues with what it was doing with the society. A Million Suns is more of like a mystery. You're trying to figure out clues behind this whole space journey and I really did like the clue solving aspect of it. I don't think book two was as predictable as the first book but I found that the plot just kind of cycled around. It was like whoa this thing in book one that we thought was settled oh we're dealing with this again in book two and it just kept doing the same things over and over. Book three brings in a lot of new elements that haven't been explored before and they were the things that I was the most interested in this series. Like this is a thing that I felt like I wanted to happen and finally it was happening and that's why I had it stuck around throughout the whole series so it was nice to see that play out. Although the story felt full like we got the answers we needed there was a direct conclusion there were a few things that I couldn't really suspend my disbelief enough to fully believe the whole setup of things and all the answers that we got but it was a full conclusion in my opinion again book three has some very predictable plot points and I just think that overall the series was predictable. Book 3 has also gotten away from that dystopian society and has a little bit more diversity in terms of the cast of characters and I just feel like book 3 was kind of worlds apart from where the series started and it was worth it in the end to me to have continued the series. So I am glad that I read this one but it wasn't all that impressive to me. I think that it was pretty predictable and it was very difficult to get into. You have to really know you're not going to like this world. The last thing I will say that I did not like about this series and it happened throughout all three books. I really did not like the relationship between Elder and Amy that is set up and I feel like the romance is not front and center but it is prominent enough that if you don't like this romantic pairing that will probably affect how you feel about the series overall. The reason I didn't like it is because I felt like Elder was too jealous, too possessive. Jealousy is very typical for first romances. When you've literally never experienced anything like this before, it can be natural to deal with jealousy and it really depends on what you do with that jealousy. But getting Elder's internal thoughts, a lot of the ways that he thought about Amy were very sexualized. Anytime he thought romantically about her, he always wanted to crush her in some way. He wants to grab her and crush her up against the wall. He wants to crush her body to his. And it was just very aggressive sounding to me. And he can't stand it when Amy talks to any other guys. But Elder never did anything physically aggressive to her and he didn't feel like he was manipulating her. So so, you know, I didn't like his internal thoughts, but I can't say that they aren't realistic of some people when you're in a first relationship type situation. I'm just saying that me, as an adult reader, I could see that I didn't like this relationship. My other concerns of the series went away, but the relationship continued to be one that I could not support, so, you know that affected my thoughts on the series overall. I would recommend this one to fans of the Maze Runner series by James Dashner. This one definitely has a much more conclusive ending. You actually get the answers in this one, so I would recommend this over the Maze Runner. But it did remind me of the Maze Runner in a lot of ways just set in space because these characters are trapped in this one location and they're trying to figure out like, why are we here? Can we get out of here? Can we do things differently? Or do we have to keep living by what we're told we have to do? And there's also a lot of made up slang and curse words. You do get some of those made up words, but I felt like they were much more natural than the ones in the Maze Runner. But there was kind of a vibe similar to these two series to me. So if you really love the Maze Runner, but like wish it had been set in space and had a more conclusive ending, this is a series that I would say you might like as well. But overall, if you're looking for a young adult sci-fi series, there are other YA sci-fi series that I would recommend over this one. The ones in particular that I have enjoyed a lot more are the Starbound Trilogy by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner and the Illuminae series by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. So yeah, those are my overall thoughts on the Across the Universe Trilogy by Beth Revis. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be when I first got into book one. I am glad that I finished it. If you guys have read this series and you share some of my thoughts or you disagree with them, we can definitely chat more about it down below. If you have any specific questions about these books that I did not cover in this review, let me know those down below and I will answer you there. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the comments. Bye!